Hi Paul, it's Petra. Can you put me through to Jackie, please? Thanks. Hi Jackie, it's Petra. I'm on Queen Street. I just uh, the bus just took off without me, without me, so I'm going to be a little late. I'm here waiting for the next one though, so I'll be there as soon as I can. I'm really sorry. Thanks, Jackie. See you soon. Leo comes back with two chairs and a steering wheel to represent his car. He sets them down next to each other and sits in the driver's seat. He honks the horn at Petra and beckons her over. She turns her back and ignores him. He mimes manually winding down the window and yells at her. I'm sorry I made you late. Come on, I'll give you a ride. Let me give you a ride to work. Where are you going? I don't want you to give me a ride to work. Please, just leave me alone. You've already ruined my day. Isn't that enough? Ruined your whole day. I didn't mean to, honestly. Well, I didn't mean to be born a girl. But there you go. You can take my car if you want. You'll just give me your whole car. Well, not give it, but you can borrow it. <laughs> you don't even know me, though. What if I wreck it? Then it'd be my bad for making you late to work in the first place. Okay, I forgive you, but that doesn't mean I want to make friendly. Go on, just take it. Huh? I can't drive. You can't drive. Who cannot drive in this day and age? Me. Oh, yes, I'll teach you. No, thanks. No, come on, it's easy. No, I really don't want to. Please, it's my way of making it up to you. She reluctantly gets in the car. Leo runs around the other side and gets in the passenger seat. Petra, meet Oscar. Oscar, this is Petra. Oscar? That's what I named him. After the grouch. You know, from Sesame Street. Right. Some people have no appreciation. <coughs> okay, first, check your mirrors. Make sure they're right and you can see out of them. Now, start the car. Put your foot on the brake. Which one's the brake? Are you serious? Another ball. Indicate. <coughs> check for traffic. Now, take your foot off the brake and ease your foot on the accelerator. That's it. Nice and easy. You're doing it. See, not so bad, is it? I'm trying to concentrate and you're bailing unnecessarily. Okay, now slow down the intersection. Watch out for the bus turning. Slow down for the bus. Slow down for the. Slow down for the bus turning. You're freaking me out. I can't do this. Well, you have to do this until we get out of the traffic. You can't just sit here in the middle of the road. I don't want to drive anymore. You have to. Cars are beeping at you. I can't. Yes, you can, Petra. You can at least turn around, find a park, just take your foot off the brake, ease it onto the accelerator, and do a U-turn. Pull over when you can. Oh, you're gonna cry again, aren't you? <laughs> Sorry for nearly crashing your car. You're crying, you? No, it's fine. I was planning on crying on myself at some point anyway, you really saved me the hassle. <laughs> so, you're proposing to someone soon? Hadn't planned on it, why? Oh well, there's a ring in your pocket and I just assumed. No, there isn't. There is, I felt it, just in the car, before. It's pretty. Uh, it's not mine. So it's not just books you steal then? I didn't steal it. Then where'd you get it? I don't know. Well, it didn't grow legs and jump into your pocket itself. How do you know? Maybe someone put it in there. Maybe it was you. Did you put it in there? Why would I put it in there? Because you want me to propose. To me. Maybe. <coughs> oh, you're so sweet, but I'm not really into dreamers type. I'm not really the dreamers type. What? Maybe Jilly lived up there. Oh, now who's the creep? <laughs> Why? Who's Jilly? Jilly is... Huh. I think we're dreaming. We're not dreaming. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, okay. Calm down, it's, it's not a big deal. <coughs> it's a big deal. I've got someone's expensive looking ring in my pocket. Well, maybe now's a good time to propose then. <coughs> fine. Yeah, maybe. She's a lucky gal. Why does it seem like you care too much? Honesty's the only way. I don't, no, I, I care, no, I just, I don't care. I was just... I have to get this. Can you wait, please? Please, wait. <coughs> Mr. Donahue, hi. Uh, look, I've, I've had a chance to think over your offer, and I don't really think I'm really what you're looking for. Sorry to have wasted your time. He turns back to find Petra of John. He goes to the ring for a moment, <coughs> puts it in the car case, and picks up Jane Eyre again. Scene 10. Still in the intersection. Leo's best mate enters. It is vain to say human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquility. They must have action, and they will make it if they cannot find it. What are you reading? <laughs> oh, nothing, bro. Just, just a book, bro. Okay, I, to I told you, bro. 
Reading ladies' novels does not make you metro. It makes you gay. <laughs> what, what's the lady novel? <coughs> Gratitude and many associates all pleaded blah, blah, blah. His face was the most object I most wanted to see. His presence. I oh, here. His presence in a room is more cheering than the brightest fire. This is a lady novel. <laughs> it's a classic. Okay, The Godfather is a classic, bro. So are The Bone Collector, The Da Vinci Code, and Harry Potter. <laughs> this Jane... <laughs> is a lady novel. It's what women read when they're alone in their beds, dreaming of better days and a skilled man to wake them from their sexual slumber. Oh, and who finished the notebook in less than a day, excusing himself often to cry? Okay, you would have cried too, man. You would have cried too. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If I were a girl, or gay. No, no, no. Being Tennyson to the ground. No, here's not a good place for this. Fine. Let's arm wrestle. I need to display a sudden outburst of masculinity. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I'm not going to arm wrestle you, bro. Go on. No, Ben, get up. Why not? Scared you're going to lose? Okay, then. Okay, on the count of three, ready? Yeah. One, two, three, go. go. Leo wins. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> best of three, then. Ah, shit, bro, I won. No, best of three if you think you're so great. <laughs> okay, then. They go again, Ben wins. Yeah, yeah. Not such hot shit now, are you, Leonard? Still got one more to win, mate. Bring it. <laughs> One, two, three, go. go! It's a style, mate. They're both strained. Give up, man. You know I'm going to win. You give up. You're just trying to make me wuss out because you're about to wuss out. I'm not about to wuss out. I'm fine. I can do this all day. Feels like butterfly wings floating against my bicep. Fuck off, man. <laughs> Stop trying to put me off. I'm not trying to put you off, bro. You are. You little word to be strict. What about a tie? What do you mean a tie? You know, a, a, a tie. I know what a fucking tie is, bro. Like, we both win. Oh, or we both lose. We both relax the strain at the same time, no one wins, no one loses. No way. Come on, man, we'll be lying here all day otherwise. Neither of us is going to give in. Never. Seriously, man, come on. No, because as soon as I relax, you're going to take me down and you'll win. No, I won't promise. You've done it before. I won't <laughs> this time, I swear. Well, why should I believe you? Ben. Say sorry for calling me gay. <laughs> <laughs> what? We can keep going. Oh, I'm sorry I called you gay. Okay. On three, we both relax. One, two, three. They both relax. <laughs> I'm sorry. Neither of us is gay. <laughs> Ben picks up his Doritos and continues to leave them. So? The coup fell victim to capitalism. Bullshit. I fell victim to the munchies. I'll never eat Doritos. Why do we even need Doritos? What's the difference between these supposedly ultra-flavored corn chips and the corn chips already manufactured in New Zealand? Those American capitalist motherfuckers come over here, buy out our brands. What happened to the only CCs are tasting like these? <laughs> they got bought out and no longer exist. Thus, the need for new alternatives. And since this bag of alternatives didn't come out of my pocket, I'm happy to indulge. Hate me for it. Ah, I love you for it, bro. Get Gets it. more chips. Ben gives him a bag, takes out a small joint from his pocket and lights it. Oh, main feed and cigar weed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel only okay about this. Blazing right here? Yeah. Same, actually. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Sorry. I decided that if the opportunity to start a revolution came about, I'd take it. <laughs> what kind of revolution? You know, I'm thinking something small. A few drinks over anarchy, the, the peasants will all get together and revolt to making something. <laughs> or somewhat. Like the government or the treaty or politics, a race of people maybe. Oh, yeah. What race of people? Well, I was, was kind of thinking we could discriminate against the fatties. <laughs> what? The fatties? The fatties? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yes. The fat people? Yes. <coughs> Stop whispering now. Well, imagine how bad we feel if someone heard us. If someone heard you. No one can know I said that. Yeah, but you're thinking it. Yeah, but... They don't know that, and no one needs to know that. They already know they're fat. It's like, <laughs> it's like me handing a mirror to my next door neighbour and being like, Hi, uh, hi, hi there. I'm not sure if you're aware, <laughs> but you're Asian. It's a bit, 
obvious, isn't it? No one likes someone who states the obvious. Or someone who calls them fat. Exactly. <laughs> You're still thinking it. You're right. <laughs> oh, well. Happens to the best of us, bro. We would know we are the best of us. Cheers to that. So can there be some we don't cull? Pennies? Yeah. We haven't fully decided that we cull them yet. Why? Well, you know, there might be some hot ones we can say. <laughs> hot. Fat people. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Bronwyn Franklin, who worked at the baby shop, across the road from um, Cashavers. She can be pretty-ish when she does herself up, you know, for a really big person. For a hip hop. <laughs> ben. Gillian. What brings you to this part of town? You mean um, the town part of town? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Really? Uh, catch you later, bro. Yeah, catch you later, bro. Whatever. Scene 11. <laughs> What's his problem? I wish you'd be all good with him. I'd be all good with him if he were all good with me. Okay. What's wrong, baby? I just hate that you guys don't get along. You're really important to me. <coughs> you're really important <coughs> to me too. Yeah, but I don't think you realise though that Ben is really important to me too. More important than me? No. Well, no, it's not really like that. It's different kinds of important. I don't know if I can survive in this world without him. But you can survive without me. No, you're not listening to me, babe. Neither of you are more important, but you keep on with each other, and it's almost like if you hate him enough, eventually one of you's going to disappear, and that's just not going to happen. But that's not how it is. I know Ben's not going anywhere. So what's the problem? I don't know. He just grates on my last nerve. He's an idiot. He has stupid ideas, and the time you spend with him, you could be spending with me. I shouldn't have to fight so hard for your attention. You only fight with yourself. It's such a you thing to